Hello geeks, how are you doing today? Welcome to the channel and topic of this video is the programmer's bucket list top 3 sets of programming languages to learn in near future to improve your career prospects. So before I go ahead and start the countdown, here is some disclaimer. Whatever I am going to show you is based on my own opinion, assumption and the marketplace I am exposed to. If you are working on any specific industry which is beyond these languages, you may like to consult the experts of those industry to find what is good for your career perspective, what is good to learn in future. So let's start my countdown. I'll start with number three. Number three goes to these two languages, C++ and Java. I know you will be surprised to have these languages over here because you might have already considered it dead, but it is far from two. They were the pioneers of object-oriented programming and had changed a lot in last few years. With the arrival of C++11 and Java 8, we have capability of functional programming in these two languages, which makes them as modern as any other languages. They are also ubiquitous in every school, college or university. They ask you either one or both of these languages to learn. Which effectively means that lots of people still know about these languages and can help you. These two languages still have a very very long way to go, maybe around couple of decades because they are evolving themselves to be capable of programming things for the next generation. Like Java is moving into IoT and robotics and same is true for C++ also. One of the major reasons why I want you to learn these two languages is because they allow you to understand programming. I have observed that people who have learned these languages and moved to higher level languages tend to program relatively better than the people directly moved to higher level languages. These languages are rather raw in nature. It doesn't come with many of the inbuilt things which are available now in many modern higher level languages. Though things become tedious sometimes to handle these things in C++ or in Java, but it actually tweaks your mind to understand what is happening and how it is happening, which actually helps you in doing many other things. Even if you are not working on these two languages, I'll still recommend to learn about them as a hobby because it's certainly gonna help you in your programming career. Now let's decrement our countdown and move to number two. Number two is shared by three languages Go, Rust and Scala. Go by Google, Rust by Mozilla and Scala. These languages are new but are still in number two position because they are created for modern hardware. If we say modern hardware, it means a multi-core system and hardware accelerations to name a few. Go and Rust are meant for system programming, the space predominantly used earlier by C and to some extent C++. Whereas Scala is a JVM based language where it generates the Java bytecodes same as what is created by Java language. But Scala is different because it is created by keeping modern programming paradigm in mind. Both object oriented and functional programming can be written using Scala. In that way, Scala is a very, very powerful language to learn and understand. Both Go and Rust takes case of a specific aspect of programming, which was not available in earlier programming languages. For example, Go allows us to create Go routine, a lightweight way of creating threads, which means we can handle the capability of multi-core systems in the easiest possible way. Whereas Rust takes case of thread and memory safety. Remember, thread and memory corruption was one of the predominant reasons of crashing a program in C, C++ era. And this is where people choose Rust over C or C++. If you have used the latest Firefox browser, you must know that it is created using Rust. While Go and Rust takes case of system aspect, Scala takes case of big data. Almost all our programs will take a cue from big data tomorrow. So we cannot imagine any program without having a big data capability in it. Apache Spark, one of the major player in big data is written using Scala, though it has different types of plugin available in different languages, 
but it's good to know Scala because we can do many more things as compared to other programming languages plugin with Scala. Furthermore, the capability of generating JVM white codes allows Scala to explore the field in many other unexplored areas. Now let's go to number one position. You'll not be surprised to see Python and JavaScript over here. They are easy to use and you can create almost everything with it, be it be front-end or the back-end. The only reason for which you don't want to use these languages is the performance reason. Other than that, there is no reason for not using this language for doing what you want to do. They are ubiquitous. Python is very much in demand because of the data analytic and machine learning capability. This is because the people who started pioneering this particular area didn't want it to spend much of their time in understanding nitty gritty details of a programming language. That's where Python helped them a lot and that's the reason why many machine learning libraries and data analytic libraries are available in Python language. JavaScript has taken over everything, web, mobile development, you name it. JavaScript is everywhere and it has a very big ecosystem. One of the major reasons why I want you to learn these two languages because there is a unique distinction with these languages. You can get a job for knowing a library in these languages. You know SciPy, NumPy, you'll have a job. You know React, Vue, you have a job. This unique distinction is not available in any other language where you just get a job for knowing a library. If you go to a job board, you get a job posting for the libraries which are written in Python and JavaScript. This is, this is just amazing. And this is why these two languages are at number one position and they will remain so in near future. So let's do a recap guys. Number three position is taken over by C++ and Java. Number two is for Go, Rust and Scala and number one for Python and JavaScript. If you learn these seven languages, you understand each and every aspect of programming and you are also future ready with these languages. As Strostup, the creator of C++ has said that you should learn four to five languages before you can call yourself a professional programmer. So here is my list for you. So that's all for this particular video guys. Just a disclaimer that these are my opinion based on my exposure, experience and contacts and how I perceive things around me. Thanks a lot guys. Thank you for watching this video. Please do not forget to like and subscribe and convey it to your friends. Thank you very much.